Everybody uh, has been asking on how to turn angles with maps, and so we thought we'd show you real quick um, just how to find uh, bearings and degrees. Um, let's just kind of get going on that real fast, and then we'll get on to the rest of the video. Get rid of that. All right, so on your maps, and this is an atlas, and so it's not really going to be exactly what you want, but you've got your north and south bearing line, and then your east to west bearing line. Now those are already put to your um, true north. And so as far as the map is going, if you're just looking at the map and plotting a course, say from here to over there, it's already on north. And so when you line up your compass, you've got lines that are lining it up and then you've got lines on the inside here too that swivel if you can see that. So let's just say, for example, you wanted to go from this X here and let's go, what was, a, what was an angle we had? Let's say 56 degrees to the east. I think that was on the last one. So you're gonna take your, your compass here and you've got your degrees on it. You're gonna turn that to 56, 56 degrees. So there's 50 and there's six right there. So now you can see these lines here are not with it. And so you're gonna line those up with your map and we can come over to there and you're going to line these lines up on the inside with your north and south bearing lines now and now this line here is going to be 56 degrees to the east so it's really quite simple when you're on your map now if you're if you're out there hiking and you want to make sure that your map is oriented to um, true north you've got to know your magnetic declination and so uh, you've got to look that up. Um, a lot of maps are going to have that printed on them, but if they're more than just a year old, they're going to be not accurate. Magnetic declination moves from year to year, um, and it's actually getting closer and closer to the North Pole, and so it's shrinking. And so, uh, for example, in Utah, I think the maps that were printed a year or two are at like 12.5. And if you get on the NOAA website, they can actually calculate your exact magnetic declination, and I think in Utah where you guys are going to be searching for this next treasure is going to be more like 10.5. So magnetic, so let's just say magnetic declination points you over to here. True north is going to be slightly more to the left. Now if you were over in um, New York, that's going to be flipped. If magnetic declination points you here, true north is going to be more over to the right. And I think Minneapolis is going to be pretty close to right on. So you're going to come set your compass at, you're going to go to, uh, let's see, 10 degrees. No, nope, that's the wrong way. Let's go back the other way. So 10.5, which is barely past. And so you're going to line your map up now with the compass. And so now true north, we're going to adjust it this way until that, until your needle goes into that red, we used to say red in the shed. And so now this map would be oriented to true north. I hope that helps you guys and uh, good luck. These are the Uinta Mountains, home to over a thousand lakes, amazing fishing, Utah's highest peak and some absolutely stunning views, these mountains will take your breath away. But they're known for a whole lot more. These mountains are known for legend and lore of Spanish gold, silver, and even Bigfoot. People have come from all across the country to search from the east end, clear to the west end, searching for that elusive beast. For a hundred years, Bigfoot has lurked in the imaginations of scout troops and others all throughout the Uintas. I've even heard stories of full scout troops unwilling to use the restroom at night on account of Bigfoot. Um, there's been sightings from the east to the west. The highest concentration of those sightings is out near Camas in Summit County. But it's signs like these, see if I can show you here. It's signs like these that drive the imaginations of the treasure hunters in the Uintas. Around the turn of the century, Caleb Rhodes tells a story from his youth. And he tells a story about helping his grandfather, Thomas Rhodes, 
in what's known today as the Lost Roads Mine. And he tells us that there was so much gold in the ceiling, in the walls, in the floor that it just covered the entire thing. Now, a young boy's imagination can run wild. Who knows exactly what was the case was. As far as I'm aware, Caleb Rose searched for that mine until the day he died. Now, Thomas was one of the first to settle in the Camas Valley. And legend has it that Thomas Rhodes was shown these mines by the local tribe. Um, and these mines supposedly predated Escalante and Dominguez, but were mined by Spanish even 100 or 200 years earlier. Some think clear into the 1600s. This is an old English poem written in about the 1600s. And the author is unknown, but later in the 1960, I believe it was 1967, it was put to music and turned into a lullaby. When the wind is in the east, tis neither good for man nor beast. When the wind is in the north, the skillful fisher goes not forth. When the wind is in the south, it blows the bait in the fish's mouth. When the wind comes pushing from the west, then tis at the very best. Hope you liked this poem.